Hey, welcome CSE 103 class to our tip calculator exercise with JavaScript. This was exercise 11, and I'm just going to review parts of it and go over some of the issues that you may encounter while doing it, so I won't be creating it from scratch. Just to show you what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to put in a total here. So I'm going to put in 100, and then you should pick a tip amount, like 15%, for example, and click on that, and then the tip amount should come up here. That's the tip from there, which would be 0.15. And then it should be added, 15 should be added to 100, and then that would be your total down here. Right now it's not working, and I'll kind of go over why it's not working, but that should be the finished product. And then you should also see the 20% version and the 25% version. So we're gonna kind of troubleshoot this a little bit and also go over what's here and without doing it all from scratch. So here's just the, the HTML that you need for this. And there's, there's three buttons here, and notice that all three buttons have on click and they have the functions in here that are basically running functions. So there's three separate functions, three buttons, three functions. And we're gonna focus on the first button first, make sure that works before worrying about the other buttons. Because we could really just copy and paste the, the other functions. But we're gonna focus on the 15%. Plus we're also gonna do some, something to make uh, our first button a little more efficient so we don't have to just copy all the code each time. But anyway, we do have what are called input type text fields here. And notice they have IDs so we can reference them when we need to get the information from them. Whether it be to get the information, we're kind of retrieving or getting the information from this one, the meal field, and then these we're displaying information. We're displaying information in the tip, and we're displaying information in the total, even though we're not seeing that quite yet because we have to fix that. So that's what's gonna happen. Those are those input type text field boxes, and again, you can enter information or you can display information, and that's what we're gonna do. This one will enter information, and these two will display them. So that's pretty much our HTML for that, and just make sure you have ID names. We'll call them meal, and we'll call this one tip, we'll call this one total, and we can also have variable names that use those same names. So just because you use an ID name of those doesn't mean that you can't use a variable name. Two separate things, and you could use those names again. So moving down, the CSS, I don't think there was a whole lot we did with the CSS. We just put a couple styles here just to make things a little bit bigger. Just increase the font size, increase the margin right on the button so they're spread out a little bit, and that's about it. So kind of like we did on some of the exercises. So not a whole lot to worry about with the CSS. And you could leave it default if you want to. But the, the JavaScript, here's what I have so far. We're just making a function, and it's called tip15. I think in the, in the instructions I might have called it tip calc 15, but you know why why make it longer? Why not make it shorter? Just be consistent. If you're calling it tip 15 here, make sure in the HTML and the buttons you're calling it tip 15. So what we're doing is we're generating variables so we could use the information and run calculations. So we're going to have a variable for meal, we're going to have a variable for tip, and then we're going to have a variable for the total. And that what we're doing here, the calculations are pretty simple. Uh, the variable for meal is really going to be getting the information from the field. And that's what this does. So we start off our function, tip15, and inside the curly bracket, we declare a, a variable called meal. And we're gonna use the document.getElementById and get the ID meal because we, for that field, we gave that an ID of meal and we're getting the value from it. So whatever someone puts in is gonna be the value. And notice that we're putting this variable inside the function. So we wanna get the value when we click the button, not before. We had another exercise where it's, it's blank if you don't do it when you click the button. So you want to make sure that you get the value when the button is clicked. That's why it's inside the function. Because if it gets the value before, before there's going to be nothing in there yet if you hadn't put in information. Because it'll just go right through there and look for the information in there and there'll be nothing there yet. So it's going to get the information when the button is clicked. That's why that variable is in there. And moving down, we have another variable called tip. Now tip is basically going to be taking our meal multiplying it by 0.15 and that should give us a 15% so that's pretty simple and then we're going to display that that just does the calculation but then we're going to display it so we're going to say document.getElementById tip because that's the id of this field is called tip and in the value area see here we're actually displaying in the value here we're getting the variable as we're getting the uh, value as a variable here we're displaying a variable in as the value. So we're kind of doing the opposite of what we did here. So we're displaying it. So we're basically saying in the dot value, display tip. And we're also going to put tip dot two fixed. That puts the two decimal points after that. You know, when in the instructions, you may not do that at first, but that's a little kind of extra that adds the two decimal points. So it looks like currency. And then what happens is once we display that tip, 
we're going to take the tip and just add it back to the meal. So it should come up to 115. And that's not happening here because we have, we're not having an error, but it's just not displaying. And one thing that I just want to want to point out here is if I display, I'm going to un uncomment this console log meal. And that actually shows up in the console. And this is a little console. And this kind of works behind the scenes. This doesn't show up on your page. It works behind the scenes. It's kind of meant for kind of testing things. So if I just go through here and put in 100, and then I hit this, you can see what happens. This is a, a string. The fact that it has quotes around means it's a string. It's not really a number. Because if I actually show tip, tip is actually a, would actually be a number. And just, just to show you this, and I'll do it again, and you can see the difference. The 100 is a string, 15 in that orange is actually a number. In here you can see numbers are always kind of in orange, and the string always is kind of in green with the, with the uh, quotes on it, at least, at least with this color scheme. So it, this, the problem is, is down here we're adding a variable plus kind of a, a string kind of thing, and it's not really able to, to do anything for us. So it's, it doesn't know how to add that together. It, it's not really displaying correctly as a number in this kind of state here. So we, we have a little issue to deal with, and I'll, I'll even get rid of this now. I don't need this, but that was just to kind of prove that it's reading it as a string. So what actually happens is when you put a value in a box like this, it reads it as a string, even if it's a number. So what we have to do in order to make this happen, we could do something called parse float. And I'll just say meet meal equals, and just to redefine the variable, you could just write it again. And I'll just do parse float. And in parentheses, I'm gonna put meal. And what that should do is it should treat it as a string. And even if I go back, even if I go back and put console log here, if I run this again, and I'll put 100 in here, now it's working. And you can see what's happening. It's treating 100 as, it's treating tip as a number, and it's treating meal as a number. So now it's actually doing that for us. So now we're okay as far as, as, far as that goes. So we're getting the right, the right value. Everything's showing up as numbers. Now what we want to do here, and then that should help this one down here, because all that we're doing down here is just saying total equals meal plus tip, and that should add it together. And we're just displaying total. And we're just saying to fix, so it actually puts that in. So again, just by adding this one line, parse float and make sure it keeps this meal thing that's being entered in the box as a number. We haven't dealt with numbers before, so now we are. So if I even if I put in 10, now it's treating that $1.50, $11.50, it's adding it together. It's treating meal as a number all the way through. It's not just doing the little conversion there because there's multiplication. So it's treating this as a number plus a number and that's why it's ending up with with 1150. So, so that's what you're going to want to do to start. Now to do this uh, the second time, there, there's two ways you could do this. You could copy this entire function and paste it twice and call one tip 20 and another tip 25 and just change this number. That's all you would have to do. And that's simple enough to do that and it would work fine as long as you have as long as you have the functions indicated in here that should work fine and you could you could do that. I don't care if you do that. One thing I wanted to try to do to just make it more efficient is to actually run this whole function again except kind of everything's going to be the same except for this number. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice to just run the function again, except just change one number? And the way to do that is we could actually do this. Instead of using 0.15, you could really just say, okay, we're going to make a variable, and I'll just call it tip, and I'll put underscore percent. I put it together on the other one, but I'll, I'll put an underscore just to make it make more sense. Now, I didn't declare it yet, so let me declare it out here, and I'll just say var equals, and I'm going to start it off at 0.15, because that's how it starts. And I'll put a semicolon there. So, so that's my variable representing a tip. So it's going to basically substitute that inside there for the first variable. And then that should work. You know, if, we, if, we don't, if we're not sure it's going to work, let's try it out. So we'll do 100, and everything works, because that's going in there, and we're using the variable. And then what we're going to do for the next two, instead of copying this whole function, I'm just going to do this. I'll copy the, just the top part. And I'll call this one tip 20, and I'll finish it off. I'll put my closing bracket. And then all we have to do here is basically run or redefine the variable. We could say, okay, the, the tip percent here, let's say that's going to be 0.20. And then we're basically going to run tip 15 again. So we're rerunning the original function. You know, so we're, we're basically copying the re original function and just running it. So, but before we do that, because because now it's going to be using that that 115, we're just going to say, hey, before you run tip 15 again, 
let's use point 20 and then when it runs it if we run it through here I'll do a hundred and I'll click on this button then it puts the 20 then it does the 20 percent because it's throwing that in first and that's easy enough and it's only you know two lines of code instead of you know six lines of code or what we had up here so it's just a way to be more efficient doesn't mean it's right or wrong but it's just more efficient and there's even more efficient than this so now I'll make one called tip 25 and I'll make this percent 25 so it's kind of just reusing the original function and just changing the variable and notice it still has to use the tip 15 function because it's going to run that function right after you change the variable so now if I put in a hundred here now it'll do the $25 and the $125 it'll add to it. The problem that we ran into is if you know we do that, that works fine, except it, when we go back here, it doesn't reset it because it doesn't reset this number again. It just uses whatever the last one we had. And when it goes through here, it gets to tip percent and whatever the tip percent was last at, whether it was 0 0.20 or 0.25, that's what it uses. So it has no way to reset it. So one thing we we thought would be good to do is if we just kind of at the end of this function put in a tip underscore percent equals 0.15 at the end that way once this function runs it resets it back to 115 so then when we go through here we could reset it to 0.20 and it'll run the function and then set it back to 15 and then run it here and then set it back to 15 so then if you go back to the beginning it's always going to be reset to 15 so just by adding this line here at the end of our tip 15 function is kind of a little fix to keep it from not getting reset so now whatever we put in just by doing that there it is there's the 20 there's a 25 now when we go back it'll reset that just by throwing that in here just by putting that line at the end of the function now there's different ways to do this but that's one way that makes it a little f more efficient and I thought it would be nice to just try that out again if you had just copied this function the way it was originally with the percent actually in there and just you know copied it twice and had a tip 20 and a tip 15 and just changed the numbers or a tip 25 and just change the numbers that would have been fine too but I thought it'd be nice to try two functions that reuse a function that reuse an original function and just add change one line of code so that's just kind of being more efficient with all your codes less things to you know since all this works already being done that way if you had to change something you know if you change the meal ID or change something about it they would be updated in here you wouldn't have to change it in three separate functions that's where you know being efficient sometimes helps so so that's tip calculator and hopefully that wasn't too difficult just adding the little things at the end hopefully that made sense to just kind of reuse the reuse the first function and just kind of throw in the variable change and we did have a little glitch there that we kind of fixed by resetting it at the end of that function so that's exercise 11 tip calculator